Carl, of course, it's not like we don't have other news as well that we're watching this morning, including uh, the Apple news, which I know Jim wants to talk about, yes. <laughs> uh, which is based on a, uh, a Bloomberg story at this point um, in terms of them not increasing production to the level that they previously indicated. So they were going to go up by six million units in the second half of the year. Now they're not. So they're going to stick with what is what a uh, name to produce, I guess, Carl, 90 million uh, overall units, but stocks down. Although well, I saw Jim tweeting about uh, this Morgan Stanley note, Jim, calling it more bark than bite. Right. Well, you know, Morgan Stanley's been the best. And a lot of people say, well, wait a second, Jim, you know, that's that, that's Katie Uberty, and she's no longer in charge. But I'm looking at it. Pulse initial iPhone production headlines more bark than bite. I spent a tremendous amount of time last week when I was on the West Coast speaking both with uh, suppliers off the record, but also with a major phone company off the record. And while you may believe uh, that Apple's suppliers are talking to Bloomberg, any supplier that talks to Bloomberg will immediately be cut off. Uh, Apple's made that clear to me n numerous times. And the reasons why I have c consistently said to own Apple, not trade it, is that every time I get one of these stories, I am told by people very high level uh, in this whole process that anyone who talked to Bloomberg is fired. Now, the, Apple's the largest company on earth when it comes to this. So why would you risk being fired by having an off-the-record discussion, which then becomes on the record with Bloomberg, unsourced. Not only that, but one of the, the main reason why there has been tremendous demand is that ATT and Verizon are desperate to keep their customers, given the fact that T-Mobile has kept its pricing down. So it may be entirely be possible that someone wants to spread a rumor to get Apple down, which would be, David, exactly if you were a, uh, let's say, somewhat nefarious, you do in order to break the Nasdaq. That's true. Although I, you know, I've built my 35-year career on hoping that people will talk to me when perhaps it's not always in their best interest to do so, Jim. So right, but there is I'm not one... necessarily in the habit of, you know, no, but... criticizing others' journalism. Uh, we've seen stories like this in the past. Well, you that's are my right. Point. Oftentimes they are sort of a misdirection. Not right. always. I, I uh, and spoke... in this case, I would point out there are positives in this as well, where they're cl claiming that higher-priced iPhones are actually selling yes. at a more rapid clip than the, uh, than the lower or entry-level right. versions. Right. Now, I did speak to three Apple suppliers, uh, all of whom obviously are afraid to talk to me about it, and all said, please, Jim, just go with the status quo. This is the opposite of status quo. So, Carl, what happens is, again... I'm not saying that there's some vast conspiracy to move the Nasdaq lower. I am saying that as of last Thursday, I have different information. It's entirely possible that this weekend, which included, by the way, David Rosh Hashanah, may have been the weekend that Apple finally lowered the boom. But uh, it certainly wasn't lowered by Thursday. At, and by the way, maybe let's make it clear, Thursday night, where the information was still good. It's entirely possible things changed radically but not what you've heard. As of Thursday. Right. 